Hello everyone. Hello friends. It's Nicole Steele of The Joyful Stamper. I'm the owner and creator behind TheJoyfulStamper.com and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I'm so happy that you took the time to join me today. So, I'm going to bring up my screen so I can see comments. I say that every single time. But yeah, always, always feel free to leave a comment to talk to me while we're stamping together, creating together. I love the interaction and I like seeing what you have to say about what we're doing today. So if you have questions too, ask me. That's why this is a live. So hi Jane, thanks for joining me today. I know a lot of you watch this on the replay because you have told me so. So thanks for joining me during the replay too. It might go over a half hour today. These are the two cards we're making. This one takes a little bit of time. This one takes zero time at all, but there's also something I want to show you before we get to these cards. Um, Friday night, I am having another mystery stamping hour. Hello, Kim. I'm having another mystery stamping hour. I created a special Facebook page for that. It's called the Mystery Stamping Hour with the Joyful Stamper. Go to it, click join, and I will get you into the group and it's this Friday night at 8 p.m. Eastern time. It's free. It's free to join the group. It's free to play and it's so much fun. You are not going to want to miss it. Hi Marianne. Um, so yes, get yourself signed up for the mystery stamping hour. We had one last Friday and it was a lot of fun. So people are coming back. Also, it is the last week of retirement products from Stampin' Up! So the annual catalog, the um, occasions catalog, or the mini catalog we call it now, we're in the last week of that until June 2nd or while supplies last. Some of the things are discounted, so make sure you check your list against what is retiring so that you can get it ordered. Um, my site, my store, is shopwithnicole.stampinup.net. And if you need a brand spanking new catalog, if you need one of these, beauties the new catalog packages went out and this was the card that I put in them because it features the new in colors so if you want one of these and you aren't already working with a demonstrator that you love just shoot me an email Nicole at the joyful stamper.com and I will send one out to you at no charge and I'll throw a couple extra goodies in there too because I want people to have the catalog package that I've always wanted to get so I try to make it fun, right? Otherwise, I would not be called the Joyful Stamper. So let's look at those new in colors. All right, let's look at them. Every year, Stampin' Up! introduces five fresh, trendy in colors, and we say goodbye to five other ones. So we're going to look at the new ones this year. And I pulled out, I have so much retiring cards, or retired cardstock guides. It's ridiculous. It's embarrassing, but that's what happens when you've been stamping for 20 years. And I have loved all the colors. So what I did is I spent an evening while watching The Masked Singer cutting up all of the old cardstock I've got and the current colors so that we could compare them. Okay, this is always fun. Always fun. This is the new in color, Bumblebee. It's kind of mustardy, I think. I don't know. But that's it. It's golden. But this was an old color, Marigold Morning. This was Pineapple Punch which is a retiring in color. This is the one that we're saying goodbye to this year. This is Daffodil Delight. This is a current color. This is Crushed Curry. This is a current color. And this is Yo-Yo Yellow, which is a color from years ago. We no longer carry it. So this is so helpful because you can see how this one compares to all the other yellows. So let's arrange it a different way. Let's do it like this. And you can see, and this is Yo-Yo Yellow. So it's not as bright as some of the others, but um, it's, it would be great for fall. I think this would be a really good color for fall. So chime in on what you think about these. I'm interested. Do you guys like Bumblebee, this Bumblebee yellow? This was a color featured in the Ornate Garden Suite style of products that we released early before the annual catalog. So I like these kinds of fallish colors. So I'm excited about this one. And the names are always so cute. So cute. Okay, so that's Bumblebee. All right, and I'll put it aside so I'll bring the new ink colors out at the very end again. Okay, so Just Jade, that is a new ink color that's coming June 3rd. And we have Emerald Envy, 
and we have Cucumber Crush. These are both old colors, no longer carry them. Garden Green, that is a current color. Call Me Clover, this is one we are saying goodbye to. Shaded Spruce, that's a current color. And Mint Macaron, that's also a current color. So these three, um, not available. And these three are current and are part of our color collection. And this is the new green. So what I always get surprised about, guys, is I think I know what color looks similar to the new in colors. And then I hold it up against my cardstock swatches and I realize just how off I was. I thought this Just Jade was going to be um, like uh, Emerald Envy. Not even close. Not even close. Marianne, you like bumblebee? Do you like those fall colors? I know you're a tropical girl. <laughs> I see all your beach photos. So, but this just jade. I think this would be a good tropical color actually too, Marianne. Thank you. Just um, now that we're talking about that. So I'm excited to work with this one too. And yeah, I don't know. Not as bright again as the others. The palette itself doesn't seem as bright this year with the new in colors. But that's okay. That's what's so fun about having these new things every single year is just always something new to play with. Right? Right? Hello, Mom. I know you're coming over for your cake after. Did you guys see the rainbow cake my daughter made? I posted it on Facebook and on Instagram. Oh, my word. We ate it last night, and it was so good. It was so good. You know, actually, that's why my nails aren't done for today's live because we got Taco Bell at 8 o'clock last night and then we had some of that cake. So there wasn't time to paint my nails. I was too busy um, having a very late dinner. Okay, this is Misty Moonlight. This is the new in color that's coming out. It's kind of a dusty blue and I have so many blues here so I can't fit them all on here. Pacific Point is current. Balmy Blue is current. Knight of Navy is current. Buck Buckaroo Blue is retired, Brocade Blue is retired, and Blue Bayou is retired. I thought this was going to be like either Buckaroo Blue or Blue Bayou. Again, not even close. Not even close. But I love the dustiness of this. I am thinking, um, I think it'll look nice with gold or silver. And I like a color that works with both like that. So I'm really interested in, or I'm really looking forward to playing with this one. And that's actually the card base I'm going to use for today's card. I used Just Jade in my sample, but I'm going to pull out Misty Moonlight. Here's some other blues too to see how they compare with Misty Moonlight. Let me pull those out. Okay. So now that we've seen Bumblebee, Just Jade, and Misty Moonlight, does anyone have a better idea of which one they like best so far? So we have Midnight Muse, Not Quite Navy, and Bordering Blue. These also are old colors. Bordering Blue is actually one of my favorite blues, but it's from about 15 years ago, so it's been, it's it's like a grayed out blue. But, um, so that's how they look. I think these two look nice together, actually. But this is no longer available. So, okay, so that's Misty Moonlight. All right, let's pull it. Um, okay. Put your sunglasses on, everybody, because this next one is a bright magenta madness. And we have lovely lipstick. That one is retiring June 2nd. Strawberry slush. That is an old color. Watermelon wonder is an old color. Flirty flamingo is a current color. And melon mambo is a current color. This is not like any of these, I don't think. It is far pinker maybe with a little bit of purple in it I don't know I don't have a truly good eye for color I love to stamp but I'm not like a color expert Marianne's still going with bumblebee <laughs> we have one more color to go so that's magenta madness these are all the pinks that I thought um, sort of came closest to it so but wow look at those three those three are similar but so this is the new one that's coming out June 3rd. This is the one we are saying goodbye to. All right, one more color. There's five new in colors. Okay, Cinnamon Cider. And Marion, you said you liked Bumblebee. I think that would look so pretty with, with them, the two of them together, right? Yeah. So we have Cinnamon Cider. I love browns. Can brown be your favorite color? Because I think it's mine. 
Crumb Cake, that's a current color. Soft Suede is a current color. Early Espresso is a current color. Creamy Caramel is a retired color. And Baked Brown Sugar is a retired color. So this, all these browns just, I think, vintage. I think distressing. And when I'm creating a card, that's the style I like the best. So I'm super happy um, with this color scheme here. But Cinnamon, cinnamon Cider, it... Um, it really does look like the color of cinnamon. I use cinnamon almost every day and that is spot on with it. So let me bring out the other colors again and you can get a good feel for them. So we have cinnamon cider, misty moonlight, bumblebee, magenta madness, and just jade. So those are gonna be the five colors all available June 3rd in the new catalog. I think it's gonna be a super fun color palette to play with and we're gonna play with it today. So, all right. First look at the in colors. Let's get started stamping. I think it's time. So we um we're gonna do this one first. The mercy, the thank you card. Yes. I had so much fun making this one. Let me pull out my products, okay? And I'm gonna show you a cool trick you can do with your embossing folder to add some really subtle but very pretty details to your card, okay? So we're starting with thick, very vanilla. The reason it's thick, we have standard very vanilla, but I'm using a th the thicker version of our very vanilla because I'm gonna use it as my card base. So this is four and a quarter by 11 inches, scored in the middle at five and a half, and folded there also. So that's our card base. Then I also have a four and a quarter by five and a half inch piece of cherry cobbler cardstock, and this is gonna go on top of our card card base just like this but we have a lot of work to do with this one first so let's get started so the first thing I'm going to do is I took Parisian Blossoms designer series paper and I cut them into one inch squares just like this now some of you may have a punch that's a one inch square you can use it um, it doesn't have to be a one inch square it can be another size if you want you can use a die you can use a frame uh, whatever you want but I'm going to create a tiled pattern on this so I'm actually gonna start at the top here and I found this was easiest and you know what I want this side so we'll put that side the one that hangs off there so I'm gonna start it just like this all right it's gonna hang off and I'm gonna get a baby white because I just got glue all over my finger Liquid glue is great. It's got a super strong hold, but okay, I'm glad you like this card. Glad you like it. So now that I've got that one started, I find it easiest to turn this ever so slightly so that the squares are now looking straight at me, even though my cardstock piece is actually diagonal. And now I am just going to start applying glue. And I'm putting only a dab right in the middle because I don't want it to ooze out everywhere. All right, and I'm gonna lay these down one by one. Now, you do not have to get them perfect. It doesn't have to be a perfect distance in between each one of them because this is gonna be a vintage card and we're gonna have so many details going on with this that it won't matter. And look, I used the other side of the paper by accident, but it's all the same color. It's the mix of petal pink and cherry cobbler, so it looks good and I actually did it on my card sample too you know that would be like one of those games where it's you, you see two pictures and one's not like the other and you have to spot the differences we could do that with this pattern too we could say oh spot which square is not like the others where did she mess up with her designer series paper okay sticking that on Creating a pattern. So did everybody have a good Memorial Day? My two older daughters went to picnics. They went kayaking. Um, there was a Bible study involved. Um, food. I forget what else. Dogs. All kinds of stuff. And my youngest daughter stayed home with us and she made that awesome rainbow cake. And I stamped. And it was actually really nice. Saturday we celebrated my dad's birthday. What else did we do? Sunday we went on a hike. Well, just me and my oldest and my husband. 
because the other two, they don't like bugs. Imagine that. No bugs. But it wasn't that buggy. It was really nice. And I haven't gone camping in a, or camping. I haven't gone hiking in a super long time. So we were up at Swickley Heights Park. I wanted to take the dog, but she's too little. Do you guys have dogs? Do you have a big dog or a little dog? Mary, and you had a quiet, a quiet uh, Memorial Day. I'm gonna. I think I added glue. Yeah, right there. You know what? My daughters that were out, they told me it was actually really quiet. There wasn't much traffic. So it seems like a lot of people actually did stay home on Monday, which is, I know, not the norm because usually it's pretty crowded. Okay, and we're going to just fill in these areas over here with some more squares. Now, if you want to be conservative with your designer series paper, you actually could, could go around and just trim off the extra and then use those extra bits to fill in the spots. But... I'll tell you what, I got so much of this paper that I'm okay with using it up like this and just trimming off the extra. So some of the places spaces get a little bit tiny. So a little bit of extra glue there. And I'm going to bring in some of those extra pieces that I have from the sample that I made. Oh, there, I did the wrong pattern again. Mary, my mom has three cats. Two of them she found under my dad's lawnmower when they were baby kittens. My dad started the lawnmower and it didn't catch and he flipped it over to see what was wrong and there were the kittens. And I don't think the kittens were the reason why it didn't start either. I think uh, it just worked out that it didn't start, which is a good thing because that would have been bad. That would have been really bad. All right, one more tiny piece there, and then we're done. I told you this was a bit of a fussy card, but oh my goodness, it's so pretty. Let's wipe off some of this extra glue. Okay. You know, some things I could do ahead of time, but sometimes I think it's good to see the whole process, especially if you are a beginner stamper. Okay. I glued it to my paper. There we go. I feel like there should be one little piece right down there, but I don't know if it's worth it. Look how tiny that is. That is so super tiny. Okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Put a little dot of glue there. Okay, and then while I let this set aside to dry just for a minute or two, so it, because I don't want to trim it off while the glue's still wet, um, I'm going to set this aside, and I'm going to start my sentiment here. So this is a strip of petal pink cardstock. Sorry, I need my wipes again. I got sticky fingers from the glue. This is a strip of petal pink cardstock and it's a scrap, you can see. And I have Parisian dies here. These go with the Parisian beauty stamp set. Now there's no stamping on this card other than the envelope, but the stamp set has matching dies. So that's the stamp set. This die cuts out this Eiffel Tower or you can cut the Eiffel Tower out by itself and all those little details will punch out. There's a really pretty swirl. There's one that says Amour. Pardon my French because I don't speak it. This says Mercy which is thank you. And I die cut the Mercy one out and there's the Fleur de Lis that die cuts that image out there. So I die cut the Mercy out. Now if you go to YouTube, you will see my little die cutting trick for this. When you're die cutting really small, intricate dies. Hi, Linda. I use a dryer sheet so that it easily peels away from the negative space of the cardstock. I have that video on YouTube if you want to look at, look at it, watch it. And then what I do is I leave it on the dryer sheet while I'm creating my projects so I don't lose them. So I'm using fine tip glue. And I'm going to first glue down this basic black layer of Mercy. So this E is filled in here. So watch when I peel this away. It leaves that little punch out behind. So I don't have to sit there and poke it out like that. You know, I, I don't stamp because I want to sit here and poke out, you know, 50 million little chads. 
is that word still a bad word after the election from a long time ago or can we say it again okay so I'm going to put mercy on here and I'm going to put it a little bit up like this and I'm going to use a block to anchor it okay then this is champagne foil so did you see my trick was it last week I think or the week it was the week before two weeks ago I embossed foil paper Stampin' Up's foil paper and then I sanded it with a nail a nail filing nail filing block it was the coolest looking thing let me tell you so it's the same foil paper right here champagne foil you can do the exact same thing to it and you can emboss it and I'm gonna we're gonna use embossing folders again today too so you'll learn how to use the foil paper and the embossing folders two ways I'm slightly offsetting it from the basic black I'm not trying to get it perfect no way it just I can't do that okay and I'm pressing this down so it holds for a little bit let me put this back in otherwise it'll dry up on me okay now I could take that little itty bitty dot there that was die cut from the mercy saying and I did do that on my original sample but guess what we have pretty champagne rhinestones I'm gonna use those instead so I'm gonna take mm, let's take this little one here and I'm gonna put it right above that eye just like that because why fuss with these little dots when I can just put a pretty little gem there and it looks a thousand times better okay then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to tear the ends of these this cardstock a little bit here so we've got this nice little strip there okay then I am going to pull out these little embellishments and doodads here we've got the bird ballad trinkets and there's a little bow let me put them in the lid there's a leaf and there's a key so you get those little trinkets in a container they are retiring June 2nd they are meant to coordinate with the free as a bird suite or the bird ballad suite it's one of those two words I'm gonna use this key because guess what there's keys in this designer series paper so I thought it went really really well with it and there's even a little hole at the top so that you could loop it through stuff now guys I'm gonna tell you something I use this basic black twine and I thought it was still in the catalog but it's not it must have been a previous catalog I'm so sorry but you can use linen thread too and it will work just fine now I'm taking very vanilla scalloped lace trim ribbon and I'm gonna cut two lengths of it just like this okay and then I am taking the petal pink metallic edged ribbon and the metallic that it's edged with is champagne and I'm gonna show you how to tie these little scraps of lace trim in your ribbon here so I've got this I'm going to make my loop just like that make sure you leave a nice long tail okay so I've got my loop I'm taking both pieces of that lace and I'm just pinching them together like that now I'm gonna take the other part of my petal pink ribbon and I'm going to wrap it around both the lace and my looped petal pink ribbon and I'm gonna push it through and just tie it like normal and my lace will stay put right in the middle and you can pull it through to a, however uh, whatever length you want I'm so sad that this petal pink ribbon is retiring because I love it it ties so easily and I like the nice big chubby bows that you can get with it it is just stunning okay trim it down there you go I'm all about adding every little bit of dimension I can get to my card okay now we're going to trim this up this is where your paper snips are going to come in handy you want them super duper sharp and that's what they are right down to the tip and I'm flipping it over and I'm just going to use my paper snips to trim off all this excess so tell me let's do a real quick and formal poll all these pieces I'm trimming off would you pitch them or would you try to use them again like look that's an almost full square 
How many of you would save these to try to reuse on another project? How many of you would throw them out? Or let's get real, how many of you would save them to use on another project and then never use them? <laughs> They'll sit in that little scrap bin, right? Until you clean it out one day. And that's why I've learned to just throw it out. There's always new paper coming out anyways. Stampin' Up's so good about that. We've got the annual catalog that's coming out June 3rd. And then before you know it, can I say it? The holiday catalog's gonna be coming out. And you know what that means? Christmas stuff and Halloween. I can't believe I'm saying that. Summer just started. <laughs> Marianne, you would save and not use. Jane, you would save them. Ooh, Linda, this is in the golf suite, seriously? Okay. <laughs> no, I didn't get it, but thank you for telling me. <laughs> Okay. All right. Cam, you would toss them. Okay. Hello, Lynn. All right, guys. Now I'll show you what to do with the embossing folder. Let's pull out my old as my oldest child who is in college, Cuddle Bug. Stampin' Up! is coming out with a new die cutting and embossing machine. And it has a nice neutral uh, color scheme too, and it folds up, and it's just, it's going to be awesome. So, and it's going to be wider than my cuddle bug, so I am going to invest in that because I want to be able to use everything. So I'm using the Ornate Floral 3D Embossing Folder, and I'm taking this piece of cardstock that it's Cherry Cobbler with the Parisian Blossoms Designer Series paper glued onto it, and I'm going to put it right into my embossing folder here. Um, I'm going to put it straight into my embossing folder. Sorry, I think I was off camera. I wasn't paying attention. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and run it through my die cutting machine, which, excuse my sandwich for this. Turn it around so I can get to the handle. Okay, now I'm going to run it through. Okay, and you'll see... Can you see that? It's, there's embossed texture on it. That embossing folder impressed a design into the cardstock that I, or, and the designer series paper, so it adds like another little detail to it. Now, if you really wanted to play it up, you could take an ink pad and lightly swipe it across here so that it would pick up that raised pattern or you could just leave it be like it is but I assure you it is there and it's such a fun way to use your embossing folder there's other tricks too so I don't know maybe I will have to do a series on what you can do with your embossing folders because it's pretty wild okay and I can't seem to find my card base there it is we're gonna now glue this to the front of our card oh you see it Marianne good Sometimes it's hard to tell because I've got three lamps shining on me, so I can't really tell. Now here's another trick if you want to glue your paper on straight like this. I actually will turn my paper upright like this so that the edge is against my desk, and then I'll put this one against it like that, and what's the word? You're truing it up, and just give it a tap on all four sides so that it makes it nice and even. Okay. Now we have it good to go. All right. Um, let me think what's going to be next. We're going to wrap this twine around it. we got to get this trinket on here. So I'm going to take this basic black twine, which I thought wasn't in the catalog, and Linda's telling me it is. So, yeah, I'm a bad demonstrator for not knowing that. There's a lot of products in that catalog, though, I'm telling you. That big catalog... It is super fun to look through. I mean, you actually, I, I have a new catalog ritual. I get a cup of tea and I curl up in my chair and my family knows the catalog's in my hands that they should just not talk to me for about an hour, hour and a half while I make my list out. Okay, so I wrap this twice around here and then I'm going to tie it once like that 
And then I'm going to take the key trinket and I'm going to put it through the end of this. Okay, hold on a second. All right. Now, when using twine, make sure that you give yourself a lot of room here to tie stuff. My biggest mistake is that I never ever give myself enough room when tying because I try to save my twine, you know? And then I end up too short. So just, the, the twine is cheap. It's like three bucks or something and you get like 25 yards or some crazy amount like that. So just um, do yourself a favor, make stamping fun and just um, be generous with it when you're tying it. Okay, and I'm putting Stampin' Dimensionals on the back. Now, if you didn't see what I did, the sheet's mostly empty, but I don't want the edges to go to waste, so I'm snipping them off like that. And then I'm going to peel this off, and I'm going to put it right on top of this twine here. Okay. All right, and this I'm actually going to stick right over there with a glue dot. And you can just press it right to the glue dot on the roll, pull it off, and add it right there. Now I don't want this key to get hidden behind my chubby bow, so I'm going to take another glue dot and I'm going to lay it on top of that ribbon so that I can put my key right on top of it so that it doesn't get lost behind all of it, just like that, and that'll hold it. Perfect. Now I'm going to have a project sheet with all the measurements and the products I used for this first card and the second card that I'm going to be doing here in a minute. So you don't have to write anything down. Now I realize you need to mail the card, right? So you can stamp an envelope. So let's do that. Stampin' Up! has envelopes, very vanilla and whisper white. And I feel like they get lost in the catalog because nobody ever likes to really watch a, you don't watch a video to see an envelope be stamped, right? But they're part of the whole package. So I'm using the Parisian Beauty stamp set with some petal pink ink and adding some, what are they? Postage marks, I think. And now we're gonna do the Fleur de Lis in Cherry Cobbler. Let's use Cherry Cobbler. Okay. All right. And let's put one on the flat too. All right. Now, now that looks more dressed up. Wouldn't you notice this if this showed up in your mailbox and you saw the envelope? You would open it first. Or if you're a dessert last kind of girl, you would open it last after you opened up all the nasty stuff because you would want to save the best for last, right? So there's the first card. Oh, no, 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 no. We forgot something. <laughs> this is champagne mist paint. We need to add some splatter. Okay, so you get out your bone folder, get out an aqua painter, and this is champagne paint. You get a little jar of it. So I'm taking an aqua painter. You can use a paintbrush, doesn't matter. You just wanna dip it in the jar so you can pick some of it up. And then you take the bone folder and you smack it. And it sends little splatters flying all over your project. Okay, let me add some more. Ooh, that was a good one. Oh, look at that shimmer. I'm gonna hold it up and make it twinkle, but let me wipe this brush off here. This is an old aqua painter that I don't use for painting anymore, so I have it dedicated for this, but is that sparkling at all? I hope. Yeah, I can see it, so hopefully you can. I took photos for my blog, so you'll be able to see them then, but that was the finishing touch. Yes! Ooh, Linda, give you your Oh, you want to give me your, oh, do you want the card? Do you want the card? You know what? Let's do that. Let's do that, guys. Share this video and type shared in the comments because Facebook lets me see the number of shares but not who shared them. So share the video, hit that share button down there, and then type shared in the comments and 
um, I will draw a name to get today's projects. Okay? Does that sound good? I hope so. I hope you like my cards enough that you would want to get them. All right, so we go from super fancy, we're going to super simple. This is the card that I sent with my new catalog packages because I thought it adorably showcased the new um, Stampin' Up! colors. So we are gonna do it, but we're actually gonna do it with this umbrella because this umbrella punch, this is, um, this goes with under my umbrella. This was in the mini catalog, okay? So they coordinate with each other. I use this large punch for this one, and I use this punch, this umbrella top, for this one, and then the umbrella handle I used on both of them. And because I just punched it all out at one time, I was able to get two cards out of this. So we're going to use it today. And instead of using just jade from my base, though, I'm going to use Misty Moonlight. Because we're using all five in colors, you can use any of them. And this is a five and a half by eight and a half inch piece of cardstock, and I scored it down the middle at four and a quarter. Now, Stampin' Up! has these six by six inch designer series paper stacks, and every year they change the pattern on them. But you get 48 sheets, and they come in all of our color collections. So this one happens to be the new in colors, but you can also get it in our Brights collection, Subtles, what Regals, um, I forget what else we have. Last year's in colors, you can get them. So you've got these patterns on the front, and then if you flip them over, you've got these patterns on the back. And these are fantastic if you are going to use or make multiples of a card. Fantastic. So the first thing I'm going to do, let's get the stamping done. I'm going to stamp my greeting, Showered with Love, and I'm going to use Melon Mambo ink. Okay, why am I using Melon Mambo ink when I've got all these awesome new colors to play with? Well, thanks to that pesky little situation that's going on right now, we don't have the ink pads just yet. So they are slated to be available when the catalog goes live June 3rd. So I had to take a color that I still thought went with it. So I went with Melon Mambo. And I'm going to stamp this in the lower right corner there. Okay. That was Melon Mambo. And then we are going to take a blueberry bushel marker. Now this is a color that is going away. So this marker is actually not going to be around past June 2nd. But you could use... Um, a night of navy marker if you wanted to because that is a color that's sticking around and I'm going to do some marker flickering so I'm taking the brush tip end of this and my cap and I'm going to flick it on my cardstock here and just do it until you're satisfied you can cover that whole cardstock if you want to this is a four and a four inch by five and a quarter inch piece of whisper white cardstock and we're going to glue that right to our misty moonlight card base and again, I'm just going to put some little dabs of glue there because I don't want it oozing out the sides. And I'm going to press it. Okay. Now we are going to work with our umbrellas here. Let me get my punch. And we're going to punch out all the different colors of cardstock. So we have got this is the Misty Moonlight. And we've got cinnamon cider. And we'll get the other ones. Okay. So let's punch these out. All right. And I'll create a little pile here so that I can make sure that I've got all the colors that I need. This is cinnamon cider. And I might need to get another sheet here, but all I really want is this bottom one anyway, so that's okay clean out my punch there now let's get magenta madness there's so many fun colors to play with I actually have a chart that shows all the new in colors and how our current colors um, mix with them so you can get all kinds of different color combinations. I'm going to include that 
in next week's newsletter. So if you want to subscribe to my Stampin' News newsletter, just go to the email sign up form. It's here on my Facebook page and you'll get it in your inbox every Tuesday morning. And I promise you, it is not all selling. I put little card sketches in there and co color combination tips, um, tutorials that I don't publish on my blog, first heads up on sales, that kind of thing. So, all right, so we've got our colors here. And I'm flipping them over and I'm gonna put dimensionals on the back. Let me get those out. And we want the full size dimensionals. So I, my dog's at the groomer right now, and I feel like I did when my kids used to go to Mother's Morning Out at the local church here, when they were like all under five. Isn't that funny? Because <laughs> she is like having a little kid. She goes to the groomer like, I don't know, once every three months, and they got her in, and she'll be there for about two or three hours because they're really, like they, they're backed up. Um, and I'm like, oh my goodness, what will I do for the next few hours? Because my dog's not here. <laughs> okay, so I'm putting cinnamon cider down, and then I'm going to... Actually, it's helpful if you put the middle color down first. So Bumblebee goes first, then I'm going to put Misty Moonlight, then Cinnamon Cider, then Just Jade, then Magenta Madness. Okay, oh my gosh, this looks so fun! This is so fun! Don't you guys think stamping is fun? Have you tried it? If you haven't tried it, you should. I just put out card kits that you don't even need stamps and ink. So if you just wanna stick a little pinky toe in the water, my card kits to go would be the thing to get. I even put a bottle of glue in the package and ship it to you. And there's a paper in there with color photos of the cards that you're making. You can do it. So I'm taking these little umbrella handles and I'm using fine tip glue. The same glue that I used to attach the Mercy die cut. And I'm putting these handles on. Now notice, I am not paying attention to lining these up straight. Ain't no time for that. And it adds to the fun of the card if you're just gonna stick it down because it gets a little whimsical. Okay. All right, still not done. We have one finishing touch to do. And it's these in color enamel dots. Stampin' Up! is top notch, A1, leader of the pack when it comes to color coordination. So if you are color challenged like me, Stampin' Up makes sure that their ink and their paper and their embellishments and the ribbons all go together so that you can just focus on the fun. But if you do like color and you love playing with color and you're like a, a whiz at it, an expert at it, I think there's like, what is there, 50 colors that you can combine and play with and just to your heart's content. So Stampin' Up's good about that. So now I'm taking my piercing tool and I'm going to lift up these little things are tiny and we're going to add them and I'm going to put them right by their um, the same color as uh, okay this phrase is getting really hard for me I'm going to match the enamel dot to the same color of umbrella there we go Did that makes sense I hope so all right where do I want this one to go I'm going to put that one there and then cinnamon cider will go up there. Oh my goodness. Wouldn't that be a fun card to get in the mail? I love it. I love the color. I love the new colors. So special. So there's that. And then there's these two cards for today. Let me sweep it all off. I kind of made a mess. Thank you, Mom. I'm glad you like it. Okay, so make sure to share this video by hitting the share button. You have to hit that share button and then type shared in the comments. And I'll draw a name and announce it next Tuesday. And I will send somebody both cards that I made today. So I appreciate it so much. Don't forget about Mystery Stamping Hour with the Joyful Stamper this Friday at 8 o'clock. 
You have to join the Facebook group. It's free and it's free to play. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. It's the last week of retirement. Um, and if you need a catalog, let me know. <laughs> so thank you so much for joining in my craziness today. I so appreciate you guys. I have so much fun doing this. I hope you have fun watching. And let me know if you need anything. Okay? Otherwise, have a wonderful day, guys. Bye.